when the present points to a bright future, it's a sign of some good work of the past that is set to bear fruit. This surely holds true in the context of Indian chess. Riding on the strength of some quality training, a bunch of teenagers are delightfully threatening to gatecrash a party of the elite club. If names like Nihal Sarin and R. Pragnananda have caught the imagination of the nation with some stupendous results leading to their rise, two other youngsters have quietly snuck past this better-known duo. When the followers of Indian chess were eagerly awaiting Nihal, who is 17 years old, and Pragnananda, who is 16 years old, to break new ground, Arjun Erigesi broke into the top 50 and D. Gukesh followed by moving into the top 60. The duo are 18 and 16 years old, respectively. Sports Task correspondent Rakesh Rao spoke to the duo about their preparations for the big ticket tournament, their own friendship and how that translates to rivalry on the board, and the ups and downs in their careers so far. Arjun, let's start from you. Uh, this particular run from you know, November to uh, this date, uh, you have now everybody started noticing and last time when we met you you did say that there was a lot of hard work that you had put in during the covid times when, when there were no tournaments and it's because of all the hard work that you did then that it's now getting translated into results yeah. uh, now going into the bigger league you the way you've progressed you know you've won a couple of tournaments you've uh, your rating has gone up you've given some great results in individual matches and stuff like that how do you just look back at this kind of a journey and, uh, you know, just a quick uh, look at your progress in your words? Right. It's been there since, I think, July of, yeah. July of 2021. Okay. So when it started with gold nomination happened. Yeah. And since then I have been playing a lot of OTB events. Yeah. OTB events. And there were some, yeah. some downs, but mostly I've done it. It has been going pretty well. Yeah. And I look forward to reaching 20th anniversary this time. Yeah. And did you really eye for the, I mean, aim for this 2700 mark, which now looks pretty close? Yeah. But if we just go back at the journey when it started, say about a year ago, uh, or even less than a year ago. No, not then. Yeah. So my goals were pretty short term. Yeah. So first it was 2600, then it was 2650, and now it's 2700. So how much have you gained since July of 2021? So it was 2567 and yeah. right now my rating is live rating is 2681. Yes, so that's about 130 points? 115. 115 points, okay, so more than 100 points in any case. Yeah. Yeah, great. And uh, what would you attribute it to? What is the main reason that, I mean, because we have seen in the past a lot of Indian players, they break into 2500 mark and then try to become a 2600 player, but we haven't seen this kind of, a, you know, um, a shift in um, fortunes. I think the main thing that changed is the increase in my confidence level. Yeah. So earlier, although I I was told by people around me that I have the strength and I can play well. Yeah. I didn't really believe in myself. Mm -hmm. But once I I played the match against Levon, mm -hmm. uh, I I started believing in myself and in my own abilities and okay. that I can do well and I can match yeah. them. And I think that that played a huge role. And of course, later when Magnus mentioned that yes. I reached yeah. it, it was a big confidence boost. Yeah. Now, Rukesh, you are the man to answer the next few questions. Uh, number one, uh, you have been around. Uh, I mean, everybody knows you as the country's youngest grandmaster. How has been the journey for you? Uh, because the focus of being a young grandmaster followed by what we see as uh, uh, you know the rise in um, in your rating or uh, what kind of work has gone into it um yeah i mean uh, since i became uh, uh, became a grandmaster in 2019 i had a bit of a stagnant period yeah. till uh, from 2019 to uh, the pandemic and uh, i think uh, most of the people say that pandemic was a a bit of a difficult time and it was a negative thing for them mm -hmm. but I think it uh, for me personally it really helped me a lot because I got time to just uh, look at what went wrong and everything it uh, came in the perfect time yeah. mm -hmm. I started working really really hard the mm -hmm. last two years probably I've been uh, working working uh, very hard and mm -hmm. like uh, yeah 
just uh, recently this this is sun i started to show up, so. okay why why the sun spread i mean we saw this thing with you and uh, arjun finishing second first and second in a few tournaments in succession and then of course then you uh, you know then you went to this european tour and that one close loss to prague and then these three titles on the you know back to back uh, can you just take us through that what yeah. really happened say in 2022 for you especially mm-hmm. Some great results. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, my results in twenty twenty two are just uh, yeah. for a jump club. It's yeah. the same for me. Yeah. Uh, it's just a result of all the hard work that yeah. I did in let's say twenty twenty yeah. to twenty twenty two. Yeah, I'm continuing to work hard. Yeah, yeah, this European trip uh, went really well. Spain in particular. Yeah, Spain in particular. <laughs> Reykjavik yeah. start yeah Reykjavik. start out yeah. start pretty well yeah uh, was playing decent chess yeah. but then okay I mean um, everyone has unlucky moments yes, in their yes, career yes, that's right yeah and one blackout moment and the yeah. tournament just collapsed yeah it's yeah it's one round one last yeah. round one move and that yeah why it was yeah. just a matter of few seconds yeah that's right yeah uh, tournament fully collapsed yeah. but okay it happens and yeah. yeah after that I managed to recover well yeah. I I had I had my had confidence that I was in a very good form and yeah. some unlucky moments yeah. are bound to come. But yeah, after that I just focused on the next events. So yeah. Everything just went like a dream. Yeah. Now one question for both of you. One is how do you handle this rising uh, you know uh, pressure of expectations? How you deal with it? What whether you feel it or not? Because a lot of people now expect oh Arjun is playing, Gokesh is playing, they're in great form. So they are following you with expectations, which wasn't the case one year ago. So how 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 are you guys dealing with it? Do you feel it? Do you feel about that? Okay. Um, yeah, the expectations have certainly become higher yeah. at least recently. Yeah. For me, mm-hmm. uh, in particular, and I mean for me and Arjun. I mean. Yes. Um. So. Yeah, I mean I've I've always uh, enjoyed pressure. I mean I. Enjoy pressure and I perform at my peak when I'm at uh, put in full, uh, put in a lot of pressure. Yeah. So yeah, I enjoy pressure, pressure situations and the praise and the the expectations people are showing for yeah. me. I take it as a positive motivation. Okay. So yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I just continue to enjoy chess working yeah. hard and all. yeah, I just believe in myself. Very well said. What about you? You tell me. Yeah. How do you deal with pressure? Okay, pretty much said what I wanted to say. So yeah. basically, mm-hmm. uh, I don't really feel any pressure. If mm-hmm. if I truly did anything, it's only the pot- positive motivation that mm-hmm. moves me forward. So mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. Now let's talk about the Olympiad. You you both are in two different teams. Um, already a lot of people have said that you know the B team looks more exciting than the A team. Um, given a choice, would you have uh, you know said okay, put me also in B team? Let's have a junior team. Uh, as one team, and because there's only one difference between the two teams, I and mean, if you go here and we put other one there, the, it will become like a complete a team of teenagers, which will be something unprecedented. Uh, you know. Of course, that is not going to happen. I'm just asking you whether you'd like to come and join your uh, your you know, uh, peer group. Yeah, yeah, well, that would have been nice too. But yeah. I, I like this team too. We yeah. have that's lovely with yeah. it, yeah. and yeah. that's a great booster team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we are not taking anything away from Team A. That is a wonderful team. That that is our Team A, yeah. in terms of rating. It is the best team that we could have possibly created, uh, with Anand, of course. But uh, now, how do you look at uh, this particular experience? A, your first Olympiad. Two, happening at home, and this buzz, you know, a lot of excitement, people expecting Indians to be among the top three. Yeah, I'm trying not to think too much about all this. Yeah. I'm just super excited to play, yeah. and okay. I just want to play, enjoy, and yeah. no pressure. Yeah. And of course, you'll enjoy your first experience. Yeah, right? in the Olympia, yeah it's yeah. my first experience. Yeah, so that's right. I hope it will go well. And okay. What about your vocation? Um, yeah, it's Part of first of all. A lot of youngsters there, so there's only one Adivan uncle in the team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, first of all, it's a great honor yeah. for me to be yeah. to represent India. Yes. And, uh, Spe- um, it, uh, it's happening in Chennai, which yeah. makes it even more special. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, as Arjun said, I just want to enjoy the experience. Yeah. And uh, I've I also played a few strong uh, team events, but Olympiad is obviously the biggest yeah. team event in yeah. chess. Yeah. And uh, 
I just want to score as many points as I can for the team in the end. Yeah. yeah. I just want the team myself to do really well. Now one question again to both of you. A lot of people who follow chess pretty closely, I mean, who are players and stuff, when they talk about Gukesh and Arjun, like you are representing the new generation, the previous generation of Indian chess players, in a lot of positions they would agree for a draw. You two are now representing a different, uh, you know, a different brand of chess. So you you play that kind of chess, where you are not happy with just getting half a point out of you know out of uh, an opponent or something. You want to see where it takes you, how where the position leads you. Is this a fair assessment that you guys really are playing? I mean, following the Magnus Carlsen's, you know, uh, you know, manual where he says, okay, you sit down. There's no need for us to draw in thirty moves and get up and go. We can definitely uh, play a little longer. Let's ask each other a few more questions over the board, and then let's see where it takes us. Is it that kind of a chess that you guys are playing? Yeah, I think it's it's <laughs> madness effect everything. Yes. So we all have grown up uh, looking at his games, and and perhaps that is playing a role. When I was younger, I used to try to make draws with high level three and when I was white, but but as I started to mature, I I started playing for him. And yeah. I think Magnus will tell me that. He does, he does that, yeah, all the time. What do you think? Yeah, of what course, you know, Magnus was influenced or something yeah. yeah. for the whole chess for the whole chess. But uh, a huge part, part of my attitude towards uh, draws is also comes from all of my coaches. I mean, yeah. Starting from my very first coach, Bhaskar mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to my current coach, Vishnu. So they have yeah. always yeah. been against uh, mm -hmm. um, killing the game. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it just. It just, it just uh, became part of me. I mean, yeah. Listening to all my coaches, so. mm -hmm. even when I'm not uh, not that best shape, I mm -hmm. just try to play play the game and not kill the game as much as possible. Of course, mm -hmm. sometimes when you you're in a situation where you if you take a draw, you win the tournament. I mean, those yeah, kind of situations. Yeah. Like, but uh, killing the game uh, just because you're not in a mood is not. Really something I don't do. Is there is there is there a shift in attitude when you when you go and play in a tournament? Like you played in a pretty strong tournament, you are not uh, you are not among the favorites to win the tournament. If you go by the rating, you gained five points and still you are unhappy, right? Previous generation would say, "Oh my God, see, I, I did so well. I played above my rating. I finished joint second, and so on and so forth." You guys are not taking any. I mean, you are not drawing any consolation out of such facts. For you, it's like, okay, I didn't play well, I didn't finish strongly. Yeah. Is that a change in attitude? Is it is it a very fair thing that we are looking at or assessing it correctly? I'm not sure if that's a change in attitude yeah. in particular yeah. between yeah. the generation, mm -hmm. but well, the tournament I had a very good start. I had yeah. two on two. two, on two. Yeah. Then to finish on only plus one hurts a little bit, and especially against the order. Yeah. I missed a come a clear win and had forty two minutes. I just spent yeah. fifteen seconds and True. missed the miss. So it definitely does hurt, but okay. I hope to learn some days experiences and right. do better in the tournament. But then the uh, but then is it only because of the start or you you tell yourself look I'm as good a contender as anybody else. There are just eight players in the field and there are five players who are you know higher rated than me. That doesn't make a difference. I'm here to win the tournament. Do you yeah. do you walk in with that attitude? I don't think there was a big strength difference between yeah, any yeah. player because the average rating was pretty close. Yeah, yeah even the last seed yeah. and first seed, they, right. they were also yeah. almost the same strength. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was not so much about ELO, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it was more about who would be in the best shape and scoring yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. And I started off well, but hands hands beat me. He yeah. outspread me. And yeah, then, he, of course, did the win. Yeah. But maybe. Also, I kind of played the next game mm -hmm. as if I was in the hangovers in the previous game and didn't play at my best against him yeah. and missed my chance against yeah. Jordan. So maybe if I cashed on these two, yeah. despite losing to him, maybe I could have forced a playoff, but it, it, it didn't happen. Yeah. Those three wins, I mean, uh, there were these tournaments where you finished second best to him, and then in one tournament you finished third to him. That was the IPL uh, and online event. Uh, MP um, the event, and then how is it for you to deal with the fact that you are finishing on equal points, you are almost there with your best friend, and somehow I mean you are also holding those trophies but not the big one, 
if you're performing well, and then you go to Europe, you miss an opportunity. Now I'm taking you to the day when you lost your drug. And now from there, how did you deal with that disappointment? And then to win these three tournaments. For me, that is something that I wanted to hear from you. Um, yeah, I mean, the tournaments where I missed out in the time breaks. Yeah. Um, uh, after the game, actually nothing went on in my mind. I was just completely blank. And yeah. I was only thinking about that one more that I missed. Yeah. I mean, I thought about it for, for, like, I'm still thinking about it, but... <laughs> yeah, I can, I can imagine that was... Yeah, that was uh, really bad. You know, I've seen it a million times, I guess, already. <laughs> yeah. Going back and seeing what you missed. Yeah. But that one hour after the game yeah. remains one of the most terrible, terrible times yeah. in yeah. my yeah. life so far. Yeah. I know there will... You had there, somebody with you? Yeah, I had my father. Yeah, and father usually, yeah. Yeah. my father gets upset. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, looking at me, I think he just felt really sorry for me. Yeah. He was trying to console me, which almost never happens. Okay. And uh, he was trying to console me, but I was just uh, crying like yeah. for one hour. And, okay. And then, yeah, I had the thing is, I had to play the next game yeah. just the day after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the new tournament was yeah. starting. Yeah, the Laroda was starting. Yeah, Laroda was starting. Uh, yeah. Right after the tournament. So, after a point, I, I thought, uh, actually, there was an uh, interesting story that yeah. really helped me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Movement. Uh, mm-hmm. Because, uh, actually, in 2004 or five, mm-hmm. even Magnus Carlsen had a very simple incident. Uh, that too in Reykjavik. Okay. Uh, he, he was leading the tournament and he was playing in the final round against Atlee Arno. Mm-hmm. He was completely winning in a rook and lane, okay. like one or two points up and mm-hmm. he blundered something horribly wrong and he lost the lost the game and finished on 10th or something. And uh, I heard that Magnus also cried. Who told you that at that time? Uh, I don't know, I read, I read somewhere. You read somewhere. Someone, mm-hmm. someone told me, I don't remember. So I learned about this story and that made me feel a bit better. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not... not yeah. Uh, yeah. I was not happy about yeah, it, of no, course, but really, really, yeah. uh, that made me feel a bit better and uh, like gradually I started uh, thinking about my next tournament. Mm-hmm. A quick question, this will take only seconds for you to answer. I know both of you are good friends. Now, first question I'm going to ask both of you. Favourite Indian player? Anand. Anand. Favourite overseas player? Okay. Favourite overseas player? You go first. You go first. Um, I have to say Magnus. Magnus, what about you? Ding. Ding. Why Magnus? Quick. Because he's the best. <laughs> Ding. He's not the best. I I just like his playing style and, and I feel slightly sorry for him and and because he missed out on candidate yes, chess. Yes, yes, yes. But that's partially a reason why okay. I like him. Okay, alright. Um why do you like chess? What um, is one thing that you love about chess? Okay, I'll put it differently. Um, I love everything about chess, but one thing that always amazes me is how complicated it is. It has been played for like so many, yeah. so many, yeah. so many, so many centuries, and, and it's still, and it's still, it's still no one, no one has understood it. Uh, I mean, not even close to understanding it completely. What about you? What is that one thing that you like about chess? It's it's the only competitive thing that gives me much joy when I win, and and I really hate when I lose. I, I don't really mind losing so much and other things and other things winning and other things don't give me as much joy as chess does. Yeah. And who's your favorite sports person other than chess? Anyone who, who doesn't play chess? Not chess player, your favorite sports person? Djokovic. Djokovic. Ronaldo. 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 Oh great. Okay. Favorite female sports person who doesn't play chess? This is TV Sindhu. TV Sindhu. What about you? Sainal Ehwal. Sainal Ehwal. Alright. So you guys, you don't agree on anything, but you're the best of friends. I think that's what makes you so so good. But just uh, one more thing. What is it that you like about uh, Gukesh? <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew that expression. <laughs> He's sitting here. Tell me what is it that you like about Gukesh? He's handsome. He's handsome. Oh my god. What do you like about Arjun? <laughs> Tell me. He's not handsome. He's not handsome. That's what he likes. What an answer. <laughs> what an answer. No, seriously. What is it that you don't, you, you, you like about him? 
He's just a very nice guy. Mm-hmm. Like, he has no sense of humor, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, Because you said the other day that I I have chess within the chess circle, then he's my best friend. No, no, yeah. not best friend, but one of one friends. of one of your best friends. All right, okay. So I stand corrected. But uh, what about uh, you? Among among all the things, where do you keep this guy? Because I know you have a lot of friends. Uh, this thing. How well do you guys hang around? Because you play chess together, you play cricket together, you play football together. That I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm aware of. But how do you how do you manage to do all that and still stay rivals over the board? It's just completely different. I think while playing, it doesn't matter who you are playing. You just try to yeah. play play the game, but not the yes, opponent. Obviously, and you play the position and not the opponent. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But from that, you can spend mm-hmm. other things. Okay. Um, if you win the nationals tomorrow, are you going to act, dance as well as he did after winning the nationals? <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be tough, but I try. What is going to be tougher, winning or dancing like him? What is going to be more difficult? I. Both are equal. Yeah, both are equal. I think winning the tournament would come I mean, easier. Yeah, that would yeah. Have, that would be more easier, more, easier. more more in my comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, something about the dance which went viral all over was. I mean, that was that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah Abhimanyu is team play team play ten ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touch better, so. Yeah, I know. I was I I I watched it at the airport. After oh, okay. uh, when I was returning, when I was returning from the nationals, mm-hmm. and I said, "My God, our national champion is is going to burn the floor today." <laughs> sure, no, but it was really nice. It was it was really cool about it.